Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Eric, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. In this video, I'll try to keep quick to touch on a couple of previous videos that I've done with sending email over ham radio. And yes, you may say, wow, I've already done the last couple ones, I get it. Well, there's other different ways and modes of doing it, and some of these are much more efficient and much more faster than the previous ones like the old Winmore and the Winlink packet. This is Vera FM. Now, in the previous video, we talked about Vera HF. And Vera HF brings a whole new light to sending email over HF radio because the guy that says, I could do this from my, ha my cell phone without a ham radio, and it, right here, okay? Because when your internet fails and you have nothing to send an emergency email or communications out in the field, what you gonna do? And what you gonna do? That's right. It's always good to have this stuff in your ham radio knowledge. And, you know, this is all about fun and it's a hobby. The zombies aren't coming, but if the zombie apocalypse does happen, you can be out in the field and send emails and communicate with people other than talking into a microphone. This is what this is about. And in the previous videos, I did say, if you're testing this and you're finding this educational and you want to try it, send an email to my WinLink address, the kj4yzi at winlink.org, not from a smartphone or a computer, but through a you know, radio device. And people did that. They, they said, hey, I'm testing it. You know, I, wanted to, I can't reply to them all. I do read them all. But it was a good opportunity for people to take a little bit of education moment in between my satellite tracker and showing you a new radio. You get to learn how to do other things. Vera FM is a lot faster than your 1200 baud, you know, old days with a TNC, even though that's still usable. Vera FM is a lot faster. More of a military grade, much like the Vera HF. And we're having a power failure right now on camera, so I may be finishing this video and uploading it over ham radio. I don't know what's going to happen. You're getting this on. This is the start of hurricane season, start of storm season. What a better opportunity. No, nobody's flicking the lights. My battery backups are going off. We don't know what's going to happen. So let's get into checking out Vera FM. And now, here it is. Ham Radio Concepts. Okay, so you have the Winlink Express installed. You installed the TNC. Now what? First thing you do when you go into this Winlink Express email client, go to settings and go to Winlink Express setup. Put in your call sign, your grid squares, some contact information if you choose to do so. Then over here in the drop down, so there's a lot of modes here. In the previous videos, I showed you, you know, Telnet's just internet, so I didn't make a video on that. Packet, right? That's over VHF for like a TNC, and then Winmore, and then Vera HF. Now you have Vera FM. So we're going to click that and hit open session. Now it's going to automatically open the TNC. It's going to connect to your radio. See it popped open the TNC right here, which is there. Now, this is like a terminal node controller that's on your computer. Basically, what I have is a 9700 ICOM connected through USB with a COM port. And this TNC program is handling all the in and out traffic for audio and PTT. Now, you may have an older radio or even a newer radio with a signal link or a rig blaster or some sort of interface between your computer and your radio. You can do this a lot of different ways. I'm just showing with my 9700 because in the future I'm going to be showing you at 9700 doing FT8 on VHF and PSK31 on UHF. Yes, you can do Contestia and Olivia on 1.2 gigahertz, but that's in the future. In the meantime, we have this, I want to show you how I connect this to my 9700. So this is your TNC. Now notice the audio input. That is the audio level from the radio to the computer. And, and I'll show you in a second when I go through the menu. You have to set that because you don't want your audio input to be buried over here in the red. It's like yelling and screaming in someone's ear. You don't want that. So that's why I have the needle set right here in the middle so the program can hear the radio you know, just fine. Now, if you go into settings, there's nothing you really need in Vera setup, uh, although this will show you the USB interface for a signal link and the wiring and stuff for a six pin mini DIN data. We don't need that. What we need is sound card. So again, if you're using a signal link, rig blaster, ICOM 9700, ICOM uh, or Yaesu FT991A, whatever, you're going to want your input and output, which happens to be USB audio codec 
for transmit and receive input and output. And then you can set your drive level so your ALC is not way over the top on your radio. You want your ALC to be at like a quarter scale. Okay. Now, the only other thing you need to set up really is PTT. Now, again, I have a ICOM 9700, and there's a lot of different radios you could use, Yaesu, Kenwood, Elecraft, and what. But to connect a 9700 to this, all you have to do, click CAT up here. I mean, again, you could use this Vox with a Bofung, you know, over Vox, or a Comport with a mini digi, just, you know, mini digi interface, whatever. So I'm going to go brand ICOM. 7300, but I'm not using a 7300. So ICOM 7300, COM 12 is the COM port that is associated with my radio at this moment. And the BOD 192. Now watch this, CIV address A2. That's what's in the 9700. So all I'm doing, because the radios are pretty much similar, the 7300 and 9700, all I'm doing is I'm going to tell it that the address is A2 because that's what's in my 9700. And it's going to automatically connect. Now, if you had a 7300, do you know good? Because we're on Vera FM for 2 meter, 440. So I'm just using that as, you know, a connection to my 9700. So that's ready to go. Okay, we're going to minimize this. Now watch this. Start. No, channel selection first. I'm going to update the table via the internet. Now, you might notice that there's one here that's on the 2 meter sideband national calling frequency. That's an error. John had typed the wrong number in there and uh, they haven't deleted it out of the system yet but we have two in my area K4WOF and KK4SHF we're going to use this one KK4SHF 144.6 okay see it's all set up my radio is on 144.6 I am going to hit start and it's going to connect then it's going to see if I have any emails and if I have one to send I'm going to in fact here's what I'm going to do message Oh, I don't want to save that. I'm going to send a message to my little gopher here. Because he loves being my little test pet. <laughs> yeah, he loves it. All right, so I have an email ready to send, and I'm going to see if there's any email to receive. Here we go. I'm going to turn the radio up. Okay, and here you go. Uh, where are we at? Here, start. Now, if it says the channel appears to be busy, it may think that there's someone there. I probably have uh, the audio coming in a little louder, and it thinks it's traffic, but I know there's nobody there. I can see the scope. I can listen. Nobody's there. May it connect. What you'll see here on the radio is it's just transmitting and receiving. Quite fast uh, compared to Winmore or Packet. I got two emails. All right. That's it. So 0 0.6 minutes. What's that? Just over 30 seconds to send one email and receive two. Now, again, if you're that guy that says, I could do this over my Comcast with a laptop at a public hotspot at McDonald's. Well, when the Internet fails, what you going to do? What you going to do? Exactly. So it's, it looks real nice when you do this over the <laughs> over the radio, right? I mean, it, this is, you know, again, this is a emergency communications. This is something to practice. This is something that you will find useful when there is no communication other than talking on a microphone, right? So real quick, let me run through the setup of my 9700 just for those who have one to show you how I have this interface and we'll move on. Okay, here's a couple things that I've noted and played with, okay? On the 9700, now this does look like a 7300, right? No. ICOM 9700. What you want to do is go in the menu, go to set, and go to connectors. That's your magic little button there, okay? A lot of pages here. What do we need to know? Well, what we need to know is your um, page two here. 
your USB AF IF output, okay? This output level right here, first of all, you'll make sure the output select is AF, okay? Your output level is what is, it's the audio from the radio driving the software modem on the computer. You don't want to overdrive that software modem to where it's pegged out in the red because all the computer knows is, wow, that's some loud distortion, okay? So I have mine set to 20 and that's right in the middle of that little gauge there for the audio. Um, the only other thing you might need to know on a 9700 is, uh, Modulation input, I have set to USB data off mod here to USB because, you know, I don't want, uh, you know, if I set it to mic and USB, your, your mic is live at that point. You, want, you don't want to hear anything in the room. You know, you don't want to hear anything from the accessory port. You want it USB. And the same thing goes on page two here for data modulation, USB. Um, there's other ways of doing this if you wanted to use an accessory port or the mic cable if you really wanted to. No need to with a USB on a 9700, okay? That's pretty much all you need to know. Now, another thing that I'll show you here, I set up this WinLink Express for my 9700 on the CIV address of A2H. I used A2 and I used 7300. That's your CIV address. Your baud rate should be 19.2. Your baud rate should be 19.2. Your baud rate should be 19.2, okay? Everything else in here is really not, um, you, know, uh, you know, necessary for this type of communication. All you need to know is CIV baud rate, I set to 19.2. Uh, CIV transceiver, yes, it's on. CIV address, that's what's stock in the 9700 is the A2H. And to reiterate that, all that is is basically like, an address of the radio so the software knows where and what it's talking to, sort of, okay, to make it dumbed down version. That's pretty much it. At this point, what's happening right now, your audio is going in and out of your USB cable and the PTT is also controlled by USB, a single USB cable. ICOM just hit the nail on the head. Yes, there's other radios that do, you know, the FT991 and stuff. But this is just another reason, man. I came from radios where you had to make your own interfaces. ICOM just made it so easy. Really, it did. This is the whole reason I fell in love with ICOM. Um, okay, so that's it. And I'm in FM data mode. Uh, you probably don't need to be in FM data mode, but that's where it's working. That wraps it up. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks for taking it and just trying it because maybe you want to share it with your club. Maybe you want to put it on your website and say, hey, this is what we can do with ham radio. Share it, take the video, put it where you want. Just send me an email or credit me somewhere and just say, hey, this is Eric's video. Yeah, that's all. I'm not here to copyright this or trademark it. Share it wherever you want. Teach your club members, teach the Red Cross in your area, teach whoever you gotta teach that we can do this for emergency response, emergency preparedness. Just send me an email and say thanks. Put it on the website, say, hey, Eric's video, thanks. No problem. 7-3, everyone, more videos on the way. KJ4YZI.